Is this my new favorite book ever? To the video, to the show. I do. Welcome to the chaos. I'm Athena P and I very rarely read. The last time I read, I read a book called The Stars and Stripes Between Us, which was about two star-crossed lovers, a liberal and a Republican falling in love. Just as crazy as it sounds, I highly suggest you check out that video. But when I saw this in Barnes and Nobles, my prayers were answered. And let me tell you a little bit about this book. It will be impossible for me to explain the plot, but I took notes. As you see, I'm like basically treating this like my end of summer book report right now. It was somehow both fast burn and slow burn. <coughs> I'm not saying this is the best book I've ever read, but what I am saying is this is the best book I've ever read. Uh? All I'm saying is, and don't take this as an exaggeration, but Dolores Flores should win a Pulitzer Prize for this. It's a novella. There are 30 different stories in this one book. I thought it was just going to be a porno with plot sprinkled in, but it actually has way more plot than porn, and it introduces, hear me out, don't be prudish, it introduces porn in situations that have no right to have porn. Like, like think of the least sexy thing in your mind. Ready? Like, let's say it together. One, two, three. Parents neglecting their children and abandoning them multiple times. What? Like, why, why would you think that that would exist in this book? It's like, I was actually more frustrated, like, angry frustrated, than sexually frustrated reading this book. The weirdest parts were when they kind of, like, shoehorn sex into it, because look at this man on the cover. You gotta put sex when you got Shaw Jameson. Can I just say that all the characters also have, like, these super southern names? And I'm living for it. You have Shaw Jameson. You have Sonny Dalton. You have, like, it almost feels illegal to say these names without a southern drawl. So let me just correct my sin. Shaw Jameson. Sonny Dalton. Zeke Mayhew. I wrote on this post-it note, is it a rite of passage to have redneck names here? I'm gonna go note by note, let me just try and explain the plot to you. We have two main characters, it constantly goes between both of their perspectives. We have Shaw Jameson, this kind of like rough and tough cowboy who had a very absent father because his father is this rock star. He's so used to like half siblings just popping up out of the blue because his dad can't keep it in his pants. Then we have Sonny Dalton, which is his childhood like lover. They like were together throughout high school. And Sonny Dalton was a child star. Her mom is a piece of shit. She's part of triplets. So there's Sonny, Mikal, and I don't know who cares we never see them the mother's abuse constantly is brought up Sunny now has this new reputation as the runaway bride very think of Jennifer Aniston in the beginning of Friends she really desperately wants a kid so she'll kind of go after these either just newly divorced or newly widowed men she is basically the stepmother to this kid Ryan even though she called off the engagement with his dad because his dad is also an abusive manipulative piece of shit. Are we seeing a theme? The book also opens up with Shaw meeting one of his latest half-siblings named Kingsley. The description of Kingsley was very interesting. He wasn't a good judge of age, but Shaw figured the girl was about 16 or so. Her hair was a swirl of radioactive green and fluorescent orange. It was a mix that looked as if a tropical bird had squatted on her head. He had a half-sister he didn't know squat about. Their words, not mine. Like, who gives a shit that her hair is the colors of the Kids' Choice Awards? I think that's pretty epic and badass, but I feel like you might be focusing on the wrong thing here. Shaw. This story just continuously is like, oh, Shaw and Sonny are like kind of getting together in the background, but shit is being thrown at them from every angle. Like, Sonny's ex keeps trying to get with her. Kingsley is just like this really angsty teenager, and now Shaw has to take care of her because guess what? Her mother abandoned her. Stop expecting for there to be any shred of empathy from people who aren't our horny heroes. Okay, are you following? They are blackmailed with Sonny's old diary that talked about how she had sex with Shaw when she was a teenager and she put his chest hair in the journal. There are many moments in this book where I audibly gasped to the point where Ben wanted me to show you this reenactment. <laughs> no way. What's happening? Just piece of shit stepfather is back. So I took notes on the weirdest parts. Let me read you a bit of the first page so you get an idea of what it 
opens up with. Shaw Jameson slammed on his brakes when he spotted what appeared to be a red bra in the middle of the road. This wasn't an ordinary bra either. This one had cantaloupe sized cups, was made of shiny leather, and had three inch gold lightning bolt spikes on the nipples. Very misleading. You think that like, oh, is his love interest gonna put on this spiky nippled bra and we're gonna have a 50 shades of gray thing? No! She accidentally gets stabbed by the bra when someone else was holding it and had to be rushed to the hospital. That's the introduction on the first page. Grab the reader's attention, maybe make some middle-aged woman go, hoo hoo, we're getting spicy with some weird bras. It stabs Sonny Dalton in the chest where she thought she had a tumor. Besties, try and follow along. <laughs> you're listening to this and you're like, this cannot be one book. It's one book. I read it in two days. I haven't slept. So listen to this line. The short skirt that was the color of the meds you took when you had a really bad stomach flu. Fuck if I know what that means. Can somebody just explain using the names of colors what color they're trying to describe? Because I wrote down in my little post-it note, the description of colors doesn't put a clearer image in my mind, it just makes me more confused. Another thing you should know about Sunny is she went from child star to the illustrator of a graphic novel. This is the description of said graphic novel. One very odd graphic novel series that had taken on a life of its own. Slackers Quackers, a lazy duck who woke up every morning in a new time and place. Bitch, I want to read that book. This is just my plea to the artists out there to make Slackers Quackers a real thing. I highly suggest Dolores Flores. If you're watching, you just need to invest in like the cinematic universe of this world. Okay, ready? Ready? Okay, so this is a quote from when she was in the emergency room. Remember how I said she got stabbed by a bra? Never thought I'd say that sentence. <clears throat> Shaw's going in there to check on her, and she goes, Can you look at me as if you want to gobble me up? In my good Christian Texas, least sexy setting, because they're in the emergency room, and probably the least sexy quote. How can you... How can you write that down and make it sound normal? Shaw opened his mouth to answer and realized he didn't have a clue how to respond to that. Real. So they go into the cliche where they are pretending to go out because this is Sonny's explanation for this, which I think makes no fucking sense. Because she was in the emergency room, she knew everyone was worried about her. So she wanted to give her grandma something else to focus on. And her grandma likes Shaw, so she's like, hey, if we're going out, maybe she won't care that I thought I had cancer. I don't see the correlation. Can you look at me as if you want to gobble me up? Did Megan the Stallion steal that quote from this book? Gobble me, swallow me, drip down. This won't cost you much time or energy, she went on. No, but it might cost me a heart on her too. No one talks like this. I don't care how much history you have. Oh, oh, listen to this. Apparently this all for show just gone up a few Texas size notches. This is when the reporter caught them kissing and now it's in the tabloids like, oh my God, Shaw and Sonny getting bad together. What the fuck? And all the like, all the hillbillies are losing their damn mind. Ask him I. So this is, this is what happened when Shaw found out that people were reading the journal entry that was out about him and Sonny. Sorry, boss, Zeke finally muttered. I didn't mean any harm. It's just everybody's reading this and it's kind of funny. Shaw's jaw muscles eased up enough for him to bare his teeth. He managed a growl, an honest to goodness, scary as shit growl. Um, I wrote down on this post a note, Shaw growled out of genuine anger, LOL, what a freak. Let me try an angry growl. Ben, say something that'll make me angry. Big time rush isn't even that good. <laughs> I'm fucking like, <laughs> use your words, bro. Use your words. Tell me this isn't the best book ever. I'll give a really honest to goodness growl. Sca uh, honest to goodness, scary as shit growl. Is those, those are the words. Tangled up in Texas isn't a good book. <laughs> Did that scare you? That's terrifying. Okay, well maybe maybe Dolores Flores is onto something. Here's another big thing, because apparently we need the main dude to have like a bunch of humility. So every three seconds, he's just like, oh, my dick is too big. Like, that's a legit insecurity of his. It's like, I'm gonna hurt Sonny, cause my dick too big. And I'm just like, dude, shut up. He just kept going on and on about it. He, he called his dick, yeah, apparently his dick had been stupid that night. I'm like, he just keeps shunning his wee-wee. 
And I'm not turned on by it. I'm like, dude, get over it. She very clearly likes you. He's literally reading this whole article that she wrote in her diary. Why would she lie to her diary? Like, what is she trying to prove to anybody? And, and he's reading this entry from her diary because everyone is because it was published by the reporter. That reporter is a snake and we don't fucking stand her. But he's reading this and he's like, it's all lass. It's all lass. Why would, who, why? She wasn't expecting anybody to ever read this, so why would she lie? Every time they kiss, he kind of is like, she tastes like sin. And I, I get that's supposed to be sexy, but leave in a comment below what you think sin tastes like. It just made me confused. I feel like the strongest emotions I feel are the parts of the plot. And then all the parts that I'm supposed to be like, ooh, this is a spicy part. I'm more like, what's going on? I'm trying so hard to follow. Honest to goodness, I don't understand why they're fucking right now. Here's the best part of the book for me. Dudes, look at this. There's an ad. There's an ad for another book in here. If I fill out this survey, I can win, I think they said like three more books. That is the strangest shit I've ever seen in my life. Who on earth would do that? Here's a formula for every time they end up doing some spicy shit. They have a very serious conversation that involves one of the kids like, oh, you know, I'm worried about Kingsley or, oh, you know, I'm worried about Ryan. Then they just start making out. Every single time after they start making out, Shaw turns to her more to deepen the kiss. And me personally, I don't think it's sexy. I'm like deepening it. <laughs> Shaw grabbed the shovel that is his tongue and went digging. Deeper and deeper. Ew. Disgusting. Here's actually something cute that I found to be very unique. The mother of Shaw. She's actually a good mom, spoiler alert, and also plot twist because she's one of the only good parents, but she doesn't know how to cook. They explain this disgusting concoction that she creates. They've done this, they've sprinkled this in throughout the book, but this one says, it's called man pudding surprise. That sounds disgusting. They go on to explain it. See, it's sweet looking because of the rim of brown sugar that we put around the potatoes, but looks can be deceiving because the center's not sweet at all. That's where the onions, jalapenos, and garlic are. I wrote it down, I wanna try that though. And that is true, I wanna try that, so I'm going to do that right now. I'll let you know how it is. Mashed potatoes, garlic, onions, a pinch of the brown sugar we're using for later, Master Chef Junior style. Add our caramelized onions and garlic, some jalapeno, brown sugar. This is Lenore's famous recipe. It's not bad. I think the characters are being kind of dicks to her. I think it tastes kind of good. How do you feel about Lenore's famous man surprise? It's not bad. <laughs> I don't know that I'd have this regularly though. Best worst part of the entire book? She licks his, 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 his nipple? And I kept having to read it. I'm like, wait, she did that to him? I wrote, breaking news, do men like nip licks? And I kind of pictured the writer like rolling a dice, one with body parts and one with action. So it's like, okay, and then she's gonna lick his nipples. And then somebody else would be like, Hey, uh, maybe we should reverse that. Like he licked her and he's like, no, 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 no. Fucking write that down here. Let me do it again. She tickles his butthole. Fucking write that down. I'm making a masterpiece. They throw in Texasisms every few seconds, but especially when they're in the act of doing the nasty, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. And it gets me out of it. So Shaw took care of that and pushed the crotch of her panties to the side. Pay dirt. Pay dirt. Is that supposed to make sense to me? Am I supposed to? I looked up an urban dictionary. No one knows what the fuck she's talking about. I think she's just making up shit at this point. Oh, 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 damn. I gotta stop doing that. Oh, oh, guys, you'll never guess what happens next. They have sex again. And <laughs> she called him the dirtiest name he's ever been called. At this point, I don't know if that's laziness or if she's just trying to spark the imagination in the reader's mind. They never say what the dirtiest name in the world is. It's to the point where I think that they've just done it so many times in this book where the author's like, fuck it. She called him the dirtiest name in the world. I don't know what that is. You don't know what that is. Somebody is going to have to figure it out for me. I have laid the groundwork for you ungrateful bastards. I gave you Shaw Jameson on the cover. How much money do you think this man has made? How much money? Who is this man? The last sex scene was the weirdest thing I've ever read because I think she was just running out of metaphors and she didn't want to completely rip herself off every time. So when she, I don't know, finished, 
She wrote, she flew like a kite. Can you imagine? She posing into the sky. Whee! <laughs> Any questions? I have one. Why isn't this a fucking movie yet? This would translate so well on the big screen. People would eat this shit up. I'm not asking to be the lead, but I at least want an audition. I want to be, I want to make a cameo at the end of the movie. Now that's what I call a Texas size happy ending. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Who the fuck is that?